Hello, I'm Pastor Woods from Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana, and this is the daily, the weekly devotion for uh, Monday, April 26, 2021. Today's title, Church, Why We Bother. Let me start off with a reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Starting in verse 12, it says, Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Church. Why we bother? Hmm. Well, it's full of hypocrites. It's full of failures and wanders. Yeah, that's exactly right. It is. We call ourselves sinners. It's full of sinners, sinners who just happen to need the fellowship of Christ and what other Christians can provide. That's why we're here. We're full of sin. The Corinthian church was a, was a church plagued by sin. It was a church full of sinners, a congregation that had all kinds of problems, divided from one another. Uh, some segregated themselves because of wealth, uh, the poor members, many of them going hungry, in fact. Factions had formed because... Some of the members thought they were awesome because they had uh, the gift of speaking in tongues, the spirit. The Corinthians were being heavily influenced by their culture. And, uh, well, just like any of us, we're influenced by our culture, right? Yet Paul writes vigorously, defending the church as a gift. The church that needs to get back to the fundamentals of faith in Jesus and the, the love one another as Christ loved them. He defends the church because he understands how important it is to be part of something, to be part of the body, a living, breathing thing. Um, and so Paul speaks about the body as one unit with many parts. And all of those parts are vital to giving life to the body. All of those parts are alive because they are connected to the body, because they are connected to Jesus. Each part gives life to the other parts. And when one part is, is wounded or hurting, the rest of the body kicks in to bring about healing, to give life back into that one part. Everyone's gift is important to the whole because they all provide for one another. And the lifeblood of that body, <laughs> the blood of Jesus, the, the, the love of Jesus, the blood spilled on the cross, the resurrection. Without it, we're only a resounding gong and a, and a, a, a pointless noise. That's what Paul says in 2 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. So the first reason we bother with church is because that's the place where life happens. It's the community where life happens, wherever that community happens to be, where connections with one another happen and, and, and where we are encouraged, where we emphasize that bond and that one spirit. Jesus himself believed it was important to establish his church through the apostles. Jesus believed in the Sabbath and made it a point to go to church every Sabbath. Uh, he, and, and often preached in, in those uh, was invited to preach in those synagogues like he did at home in Nazareth. Jesus would often read from the Old Testament and then he would preach from that text. And those that were there were always amazed at when they, when they heard it. The boys from Emmaus, for example, uh, were preached at for seven miles. And the whole time, the hearts were burning with him. The word of God was opening their minds in ways they had not been able to do before or on their own. This, too, is why we bother going to church. At the church, when we come, it, the word is prominent. It's, it's spoken out loud. We hear it. We're not afraid to talk about it. And it is learned. Someone who knows the word, who may have Life experience is different than our own, may be able to open our minds to become more discerning or mature in our understanding of that word, more appreciative of what's been given, and then apply it to our lives. See, this in turn equips us to be more aware of our obstacles, uh, the obstacles of faith, and more aware of the opportunities for our faith. You know, during COVID, social distancing had disrupted connections with families, and fellowship at church, certainly, and worship. 
So now the question I'm hearing from some is, uh, they're asking themselves, should I go back to church? Now that the COVID pandemic is winding down and, and vaccines are being passed out weekly, um, now is it time, maybe it's time we, we trade in our, our pandemic PJs that we wear, usually wear on Sunday mornings at home for maybe church clothes. Again, maybe is it time for that? It's tempting to keep playing it safe, I understand. For, for some, this may be true and even necessary. But for those of us, this is changing. Many of us, it's changing. We will continue to have COVID, folks, in one form or another, just like we have the flu in one form or another. It's going to come back every year. But we can't live in fear like this every year. Consider other reasons why we bother the church. These, these are just some of my favorites. Consider the next ones now as we think about getting past COVID. Acts chapter 2 gives us a glimpse of how getting together with others brought joy, purpose, courage, and a greater faith. Verses uh, 42 and following says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions and gave to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The early Christians were having some fun living as Christians and doing Christian things, not just at church, but also fellowshipping with one another at home. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Notice the word there, which in truth was passed down by Jesus, of course. They were fearless, and they even regularly met in the temple courts and were unafraid of those who worked there uh, in those temple courts and event at one point condemned Jesus to the cross. The resurrection gave them courage as the disciples were filled with courage. The greatest miracle of those disciples was their courage to come out after the resurrection and stop hiding. The disciples went to the temple courts instead of hiding from them. And that encouraged and inspired others to do the same. And they continued to meet together in those temple courts. They also celebrated the Lord's Supper and they ate together in one another's homes. They hung out together. You see how important that is, the connections. That's something that COVID stole from us. So we bother with church in this regard because there's joy in it. We bother with all the dinners and the cook-off and the activities because it gives us an opportunity to react or interact rather and grow closer to one another, to the members of grace and to the members of the body of Christ. The gospel tells us that we do not have to be afraid of anything, but it encourages us to keep meeting together. To receive communion and interact with others is vital. To receive hugs again and to see one another's faces again. That's just good stuff. It's this interaction that makes it fun and meaningful. Worshiping together, being together, brings a reality of this, uh, to the gospel message. It inspires. Seeing others inspires us to see what others have overcome during the COVID. Uh, being with others encourages us and allows us to actually experience the presence of the rest of the body to, to receive, to tan to receive in a tangible way, the love of Jesus, and provide it that way as well. We bother with church because it brings us closer to Jesus through other Christians. And this is the bottom line. This is why the Sabbath is vital to life and essential to overcoming the world instead of the world overcoming us. Maybe you're not sure. Maybe you're not sure about coming back. Okay. Maybe you don't want to give up your PJs and your comfy so a sofa. Or maybe you simply can't for, for health reasons or, or distance from others, just too far. If this is your case, that's fine. I understand. Uh, I know you're doing what you can, and we will continue to pray for you. But we'd, we'd encourage you also to, to, to contact us and interact with us in some other form so that we can, we can be in touch with you. And if you're still on the fence about... <clears throat> all of this, I would invite you back to church and to the family who loves you and misses you. It would be great to see you again. It would be great to interact with you again and, and to see um, 
your families. In the meantime, I would just pray for you and encourage you um, to think about this. And I would pass on the Lord's blessings to you wherever you are and wherever you choose to worship. But I really hope to see you soon. If I haven't seen you already, some of you I've seen already, and that's been good. But I hope to see all of you too, and uh, those that haven't made it yet. I know Pastor misses you, uh, and I do too. So we look forward to being together with you again and in the year ahead. Um, so keep that in mind, just there for an encouragement. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace in Jesus. I'm Pastor Woods. Thanks for tuning in today. Hope to see you soon. The Lord be with you and God bless your week. See you later. Bye-bye.